Welcome to the Burden and Blessing Podcast, a study and discussion forum on the truth of God's Word. Our Word of the Week takes an in-depth look at important Bible words so we might increase and deepen our understanding of God's Word of Truth. We pray that these brief studies will enable you to get more out of your daily reading and hearing of God's Holy Word. Welcome back to Burden and Blessing and the Word of the Week. I'm Pastor Rob Sowers, and our word this week is Son of Man. Son of Man is the favorite title that Jesus gave to himself in the Gospels. In fact, no one else addresses Jesus as Son of Man. It's a term that he always just uses for himself. At first glance, it would seem that the term Son of Man is used exclusively to point out Jesus' human nature, and the term Son of God is used to highlight Jesus' divine nature. While Son of Man certainly does highlight Jesus' human nature, it also does more than that. This was not a title that Jesus made up for himself. It has its origin in the Old Testament. It's sometimes thought that Jesus used this title because of the reference in Psalm 8, verse 4, which is understood as a messianic psalm. Psalm 8, verses 4 and 5 says, What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. This psalm is quoted later in the book of Hebrews, and so it's that verse 5 part that is thought of as a messianic prophecy. The term is also used in the book of Ezekiel. It's actually used in Ezekiel some 90 times. In the book, Ezekiel is always using this term to apply to himself. And when it applies to Ezekiel, it is expressing that sort of human nature aspect. It's expressing that Ezekiel really is a mere man and that through his prophecies, it's God that's working. It's God that's doing the work as Ezekiel proclaims God's word. Jesus certainly uses this term to emphasize his humanity. He uses this term in connection with his earthly life. So in Mark 2 verse 10, we read, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he heals then the paralytic man. It does emphasize also part of his divinity, that ability to forgive sins, but it's the power of the Son of Man on earth emphasizing that humanity. The term talks about his station in life, too. In Matthew 8, verse 20, Jesus says, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. That really emphasizes his humility. The term is connected with Jesus' sufferings also. This emphasizes even more strongly his humility and his humanity. Mark 8, 31 says, And Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. Probably the reason that Jesus used this term about himself has to do with the usage found in the book of Daniel. In Daniel 7 verses 13 and 14 we read, I was watching in the night visions and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all the peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. We see here that Son of Man was a designation for the Messiah in the book of Daniel, and the Son of Man was to inherit God's everlasting kingdom. So you've got that picture of the exaltation of the Son of Man, of the Messiah. He is to rule over all things, and obviously then, as the ruler of all things, we see Jesus' divinity in this title of Son of Man. So the term really does emphasize both Jesus' humanity and his divinity, and you can see what a fitting title this is and how it really fits well with Jesus and how he spoke about himself. On the surface, Son of Man is sort of an ordinary phrase for a human being, and if we think about it in the way that Ezekiel used it, that's really what it's emphasizing. And in that sense, then, the title can be used for everyone. Every one of us is a son of a man. And this term didn't really openly convey a messianic claim to the public ear. 
But those with ears to hear could hear Daniel 7, in which Jesus was claiming to have a very exalted role in the history of redemption. He was, in fact, claiming to be the Messiah and God himself with the use of this term. And this term also beautifully conveys Jesus' love for his people. It emphasizes that he came to be our brother, and as Mark 10.45 says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. What an appropriate phrase for Jesus that really emphasizes both his humanity and divinity. Let us give praise to our Savior, the Son of Man. Thanks for listening. We encourage you to listen for a new word each week on Burden and Blessing Podcast, where we believe and confess that every word of God is true. Until next week, be assured that God's word is truth and is more precious than gold.